absolutely one of the nastiest stories I've seen in a while. And I can only imagine what this house smells like, guys. I want y'all to look at this story. But before we get too deep into the details, I have to warn you that if you're squeamish, if you're light stomach, stomach it, I don't know how you say it, thin skinned it, or whatever the case is, I need to give you guys a disclaimer before we talk about the details of this story, okay? Getting a little tongue tied. But some of you guys might find my content controversial or offensive. The information is coming from a credible source, which is lawncrime.com. So thank you for the article. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of the story. The point is to use this as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing these tragedies to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I'm also positive that I have this damn thing memorized at this point. Okay. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this. The person on the left-hand side, her name is Tweedledee. And then on the right-hand side, let's go back. That young lady or that young man's name is Tweedledum. And these dummies, including the third person that's going to be in this story, are out of New Mexico. And three women, and I use that term very, very loosely. I'm not too sure if that's three women, but I digress. And New Mexico have been arrested and charged in connection with extreme child abuse. An extreme case of alleged child abuse that spans 50 separate criminal charges between this trio of people. You're only going to see two here from time to time, but it actually is a total of three people. So the, the, the three meth -cateers, I guess, I don't know what, what you would call them. I don't know what, what name you would call these people. Like, I don't know. Like, they just look like their their breath would probably just make your eyeballs water. <laughs> it's about a cotton-picking hillbilly, snowbilly story here. Jamie Cushman, on the left-hand side of the screen, who they're claiming is 37 years old, and Jamie Senna, who they're claiming is 29 years old, and Laura McLennan, who they are claiming, let me see if I can get her face up here. Oh, right. On the right-hand side, who they're saying is 41 years old. Right. And they were recently taken into custody throughout a series of arrests that began late last month and carried into the present week. Now, according to Curry County jail records reviewed by law and crime, Cushman and Senna currently face 23 charges apiece. I want y'all to think about something. I think these people lived under the same roof. I'm not 100% sure. Again, the story is coming out of New Mexico. I would expect for this story to come out of some place like Mississippi, like somebody in the chat said which is actually a super, super poor state. Even to this day, it's just incredible how much those people are suffering in Mississippi. But 23 charges apiece. And I think these people all lived under one roof, one dilapidated, deplorable roof. I don't know how they do it. But in sum... Cushman and Senna each stand accused of 21 counts of child abuse and one count of conspiracy to commit child abuse. Cushman is accused of one count of obstructing the reporting of child abuse and Senna is also accused of obstructing child abuse investigation. Melon Kahn, which is Laura Melon Kahn, the alleged 41-year-old, reportedly the last of the three to be arrested stands accused of three counts of child abuse and one count of conspiracy. According to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I just lost my page here. Let me go back. Damn ads are popping up. Uh, according to New Mexico based NBC affiliate KOB, Senator and Melancon were both formally romantically involved with Cushman. Let me back this up like a U-Haul truck. I want you guys to really, really take a deep look at their faces. Let me get their names back up here. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. So the 
<clears throat> the male looking one. Let me see if I can get that picture up here. But I want to use, oh yeah, this one. This one right here. I want y'all to take a look at this. Let me read this again. Matter of fact, let me get my trusty whole whiteboard up here. If you guys do not mind, I'm going to bring my whole whiteboard up here. Where is it at? Where is my whiteboard at? Right there. There we go. Let me make this into that color. So that is, this is the person in question. Let me read this again. According to Albuquerque, New Mexico, NBC affiliate KLB, Senna and Melancine were both formally romantically involved with Cushman, which is this handsome young fellow looking woman. I want y'all to remember, while Jay, you're cracking jokes about the LGTBQRST element OP, I don't care. They hurt kids. Get over yourself. They're grown adults. They can deal with it. When are y'all going to start to have a bleeding heart for these children like that, right? But no. We get, we get mad. We get in our feelings about people talking about grown adults. But we won't care about kids like that. Apparently, two different women who were involved in, ab in abusing children were so in love with this person here. And I'm looking at this and I'm just like, huh? Huh? Is, is, is times getting that hard out there in New Mexico? Must be hard out there in the streets for a pimp when you're trying to get the money for the rent. Damn. Like, I thought women in America outnumber men. And if that's the case, then why are these women sharing one stud woman person? Can you be any more desperate? Let's keep going. They both allegedly were romantically involved with Cushman. During each relationship, authorities allege in court documents obtained by the TV station, the women would be caring for between two to six children. Let me say that again. They were taking care or had between two to six children in their possession. Here is my question. Where's the biological fathers of these children? You know something that, that, that makes me real curious? Like how lesbian can you be when you're constantly making baby after baby after baby after baby after baby after baby with a man but then you claim to be, well, all I like is women. Now I all I'm all about women now. And you could just cross this line. You could it's, it's kind of like 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 when you're driving on the highway and, and, and the police officer sees you swerving back and forth in between the lines and he's like, Sir, you you were you were you were swerving in between the lanes. It's against the law. You can't do that. But apparently you can do that when it comes to Situations like this, there's no line of demarcation of what's right and what's wrong. You can love whoever you want to and make babies with whoever you want to and, and abuse whatever children you want to, right? Here's, here's something that I'm going to throw out there again, and this is a, another quote from Tommy, a shout out to Tommy. And I always appreciate him putting out the information he puts out because it makes you think. Statistically, they say that single fathers, look it up, single fathers make better parents in general by percentage. Not all. Hashtag not all. 
How is it that I can present stories like this where you not only have not one, not two, but three women? And how many times have I presented stories that look just like this where I have a whole field of mothers who are about to do prison time for child abuse? Wouldn't you think? Let, let's just think about this because I want y'all to think about this. The house looks like somebody took, let me, let me not say that. <laughs> this house looks like a hand-me-down from slavery. I swear it looks horrible. Not even horrible, H-O-R-R-I-B-L-E. Horrible, H-A-A-A-R-I-B-B-L-E. Horrible. You could probably smell this house from down the street, and that's no joke. And it makes me wonder, for these women who only had these kids to collect benefits off of these kids, hashtag babies for benefits, one of our hashtags, why did they have between two to six children that they clearly don't care about? 23 charges of child abuse apiece, obstructing justice? So the kids were probably going to tell on them and they prevented the kids from being able to try to give the real story about what really happened. If they are truly supposed to be these good people that need to be praised and put on a pedestal, these alleged mothers, how do you put three of them in this situation with these kids and all three of them are probably about to do prison time for child abuse? Sounds pretty selfish to me, don't it? I'm about to give y'all some real details. Do y'all want to hear the details about what they did? I don't know if y'all want to hear this or not. If y'all would, do me a favor and click that thumbs up if you're listening right now. Hit that thumbs up. That'll help share this story. I want y'all to hear why I'm being so hard on these individuals. I also want y'all to think that another big statistic Lesbian relationships in general, not all, but they have the highest rate of domestic violence among uh, people who are in relationships. And that can't equal a good thing when statistically, when you have woman and woman or whatever you want to call them, whatever they classify themselves as. In a relationship that has a propensity for violence and you have kids around. So how how beneficial is that for the kids knowing that they're probably going to be seeing people cussing and fighting and beating each other up? During the, each relationship, authorities allege in court documents obtained by the TV station, the women will be carrying between two to six children. Some of those children were their own offspring and others were passing through and in need of shelter. Others were passing through and in need of shelter. Hashtag babies for benefits. Hashtag where are the dads. Law enforcement officials claim. Uh oh, lost my page again. I don't know why it's doing that. Just trying to scroll. Law enforcement claims that many of the children did not attend school while in the care of these not one, not two, but three women. But it wasn't simply a matter of overexerted resources or neglect, those documents allege. Cushman is believed to have beaten some of the older children with a paddle that would occasionally leave bruises all over their bodies. She allegedly punched the children in the face as well. Hmm. I'm sure some people are okay with this beastly looking woman punching children that can't defend themselves in the face. Right? Some of y'all think that's okay? Those documents also allege multiple defendants often withheld food from the children. And that's where we're going to pause yet again. I am not a newscaster, so if y'all came to hear the news, this ain't a news station. I'm here to give my opinion about this stuff. 
I believe that that's what most people should be here for is to hear my opinion. So I hope y'all don't mind. I find it highly offensive and flat out wrong when you have people who are as large in the stomach as people like this, when they understand the value of cholesterol and fatty, fatty foods and clogged up arteries and full bellies, right? They understand the value of, of comfort food and, and how good that feels to be on the brink of having a, a heart attack from, from just eating anything and everything that people put in front of your face. I find that highly contradictive when they will stuff their faces with anything and everything, but then they starve children who don't even have a say so. They can't go out and go work. And again, I've said this before, and I think that any food that is purchased and inside the house is access to anybody who wants it. Anybody who says that, that you're going to punish your kids for, for, for sneaking snacks or you're going to beat them up or take a belt that ain't behind for eating food that's in the house. I think it's better to teach children why you shouldn't gorge you might end up looking like this, right? Teach them about moderation and teach them about being healthy. Which these people clearly know nothing about. As opposed to try to put locks on doors or, or chain children to beds and things like that so they can't eat. That's just flat out dumb. Two of the children are believed to have been chained to the beds overnight or longer. Actual chains. Going on at uh, going on days at a time. Other forms of punishment allegedly exacted upon the other up, upon the children by the defendants, including locking these kids in dog cages in extremely cold weather and forcing them to stand in a corner for days at a time. If you want to know if your discipline is going too far, see if you could do what you're doing to the kids. Could your fat ass be locked in a cage outside in the cold for days at a time? Probably not. Could you be chained to a bed and be prevented from eating? Probably not. Do y'all think either three of those women could stand in a corner for days at a time? Probably not. That's disgusting. I don't, I've just, I think 2022 has just been a, a, a crazy year. And I hate to keep using the word crazy, but I have never seen so many stories come out about children being locked in cages. I didn't know this was a commonplace thing. I've never seen nothing like this. I pray that I never see anything like that. But the fact that I get emailed this many stories and people are literally just story after story after story after story. Kids locked up in cages. Kids locked up in cages. Kids locked up in cages. Like, like where are y'all even getting this thought process from? Wow. Somebody in the chat said that sounds just like the woman who birthed me. Put a prayer hands up in the chat for that, for anybody who has suffered and actually lived and survived something like that. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is some people's reality. These kids survived. This is going to be their reality, too. Prosecutors reportedly cited disturbing pieces of multimedia evidence in assessing the charges against the three. So they have videotaped. They recorded themselves. 
So they really must have thought this was funny. They recorded the kids based on what this says. According to investigators, there are home videos with audible screams filtering through the alleged sounds of the children being beaten. In one video, one investigator allegedly observed a boy's face was being smothered in his own vomit. I'm not going to even read that again. Let's keep going. In another instance, law enforcement claims that there are pictures. They took pictures also. They took pictures showing two children eating spaghetti from inside a filthy bathtub with their bare hands and the kids didn't have on clothes. For anybody who wants to leave me a comment about I'm being misogynistic or I'm being, you know, anti-Semitic or if I'm being hard on LGBTQ, this should be the moment where I just read that sentence. Shouldn't say anything about me being disparaging about these three individuals. That sounds like sexual abuse also. I want y'all to remember. Some of these kids weren't theirs. Why did you have them with their clothes off? I don't know if these were girls in their possession or boys in their possession. No, I, nor does I think it even matters. I don't think it really matters. I can't even, I can't even, like that, that makes my brain cells want to pop just thinking about that. They were, they took pictures of them naked. Some of these kids might not have been theirs. Eating spaghetti in a filthy bathtub. You know what? I'm starting to think that maybe they could have been sending those pictures or videos off to some type of black market or something like that. Y'all know things are getting crazy out here in this world. I'm scared to think why they were recording that. Why were they taking pictures of that? Does that sound like maybe a life sentence? I don't think they'll get a life sentence for that. Like you can't be that level of deranged. You can't be that level of dumb. The alleged cal calcade of abuse. I never heard that word before. Cal I can't even pronounce that word. How does this go? Cavalcade, a formal possession of people walking on, uh, no, that can't be right. A formal procession of people walking on horseback or riding in vehicles. Maybe they got that word wrong. I don't know. The alleged cavalcade of abuse had been going on for years at the residence in Texaco, New Mexico. Investigators say despite the efforts of witnesses, to report the situation to child welfare authorities. So somebody knew something was going on and they reported it. And all you had to do was go in their front yard and see that something ain't right here. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. If you guys would do me a favor and click that thumbs up and share this video, let more people know where to find it. Easy way to support us just to click that thumbs up. Okay, here we go. Say please. New police body cam video shining light on shocking conditions in a child abuse case in Curry County. We want to warn you some of this video is graphic. Action 7 News reporter Faith Iwanu has the story. Say please. 
Disturbing lapel video shows the day state police and CYFD paid a visit to this one story home on Curry County Road in July. Hello. Hey. We're here again. The home belongs to 37 year old Jamie Cushman and 29 year old Jamie K. Senna. Both women now locked behind bars on multiple counts of child abuse. What, what, can I ask what we're here for? Yes, ma'am. As CYFD and police went through the home, they found it in deplorable condition. I don't see anything wrong with my home. Mm -hmm. Do you? Police say multiple children were beaten, tortured, starved, and chained to their beds under Senna and Cushman's care. So we just talked to them. We did interviews and stuff. So the little girl admitted. I just want to get a like an all good with you. The little girl admitted to them placing them in chains for an alarm to go off. And I guess the the mom will put chains on their ankles to like keep them in their room. The children's ages range from 5 to 14 years old. Based on the report we got and um, the kids did confirm everything and we saw the chain, we saw the locks, the kids told us um, how it works, the kids um, we're very forthcoming this time. According to the criminal complaint, CYFD alerted police on suspicions one month before both women were arrested. Well, right now, um, there's also no running water. There is... Um, it's getting turned on today. There's... The, the sewer line is... And I don't know if y'all heard that. I'm going to rewind it so you can hear it. I forgot to mention this. In this alleged house... They have no working, running water. Let's absorb that for a moment. How? They have no, and I, and I meant to say this earlier, and I'm going to say it now. How do you have three grown adults that should be working a job, not only living in this, Dilapidated, deplorable piece of crap of a of a of a home. How can you how can you put three groups of finances together and you can't do better than this? To the point they didn't even have working water. Come on, ladies. Come on. Come on, talk to me. How, thank you. Somebody in the chat said it. Thank you, LB. I'm not going to repeat it. Type it in there. Look what LB wrote in the chat. I can't repeat it. But what do y'all think their bodies smell like day after day after day of no working, running water? And you're talking about a collective of people there. At least those two adults and at least a handful of kids. Nobody with working water in the house. Not to wash dishes, not to cook, not to drink, not to flush the toilet, and not to bathe. Gross. Well, right now, um, there's also no running water. There is... Um, it's getting turned on today. Both women were arrested. Well, right now, um, there's also no running water. There is... Um, it's getting turned on today. She said the water is getting turned on today. I just, they are, they are quick on their feet with the excuses. And I want y'all to notice how comfortable they are sitting right there next to each other. They just so in love and they don't give a crap about nothing else. Flat out selfish. This is just a different level of disgusting. They don't care about how they live. They don't care about how they smell. They don't care about nothing at all. Except being in each other's damn faces. There's... The, the sewer line is backed up and there's sewer, there's poop in the toilet and 
those porta potties. All six children were removed from Santa and Cushman's care shortly after the visit. She's putting a 48 hour hold on all the kids in the home, all so six of them. Our kids. All six of them, and um, so that we can complete our investigation. The case is still under investigation. Faith Ibuanu, KOAT Action 7 News. Laura Melanson is the third person arrested in this child abuse case. She is charged with four counts of intentional child abuse and one count of conspiracy to commit child abuse. Details surrounding her arrest are still developing. The investigation into child abuse at a New Mexico home where police say children were chained to beds is growing. A third woman has now been arrested, and there are allegations against the Texaco police chief, accusing him of knowing what was going on. Here's News 13's Annalisa Pardo. Well, after police arrested a couple in August for child abuse, more people started coming forward about that abuse, and that led to the arrest of Laura Melanson. I can't imagine what's going on. What the heck? What about this? You want that? Backed up sewage, no running water, and chains. Kids living at a Texaco residence admitted were used to keep them in their beds, led to the arrest of couple Jamie Cushman and Jamie Senna. All six kids living with them, ages 5 to 16, were removed from their home after a July visit from state police and CYFD when these scenes were captured. Hey, I need you to calm down. <laughs> Come here, Bubba. Now a third woman is charged facing five felonies related to child abuse. Police arrested Laura Melanson after people came forward saying Melanson also abused kids while dating Cushman back in 2016. According to court documents, Melanson was involved in starving kids, chaining them, and putting them in dog kennels. An allegation lapel video from the July visit shows CYFD was aware of. They used to keep them in dog cages. We've taken these kids away before for being in dog cages. Court documents also allege Texaco Police Chief Douglas Bowman may have helped keep Cushman out of trouble. Witnesses claim Chief Bowman saw the dog cages at Cushman's house but didn't do anything about it and would also give her a heads up if CYFD was coming for a visit. Come on, let's go get some shoes. It's okay, boy. <laughs> but I need to I'm going to back this up and I want y'all to listen at this again. They're saying that the man that you see on my screen, this is what they're accusing him of. They're accusing him of giving these women a heads up when CPS is on the way so they can clean up their acts. He allegedly saw the dog cages and didn't say anything and didn't do anything about it. But this pussy still has a job. He's still in uniform. Isn't that abuse to children also? If you see something, you don't report it, you don't say anything, and you help the criminals get away with doing it, don't you think that he should face some prison time also? I think so. Glad his face is out there. I'm glad they're reporting this because the next thing that needs to happen is his ass needs to be charged and he needs to be in jail also. That's disgusting. That's just as bad as the CPS workers who are abusing the kids, the people who you're expecting to step up and do the right thing and protect these kids who are in a position to do so. And they, and they don't do it. That's actually perpetuating this stuff to keep happening. In dog cages. We've taken these kids away before for being in dog cages. Court documents also allege Texaco Police Chief Douglas Bowman may have helped keep Cushman out of trouble. Witnesses claim Chief Bowman saw the dog cages at Cushman's house but didn't do anything about it and would also give her a heads up if CYFD was coming for a visit. Come on, let's go get some shoes. It's okay, boy. <laughs> but I need you to get them some clothes and some shoes. Bowman has not responded to KRQE's request for comment, but in an interview with state police, he says he is not friends with Cushman and only visited the Texaco home with CYFD. He told state police he admits if he messed up, but says he never saw anything suspicious. Melanson is out on bond. She is scheduled to be back in court tomorrow. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Annalisa. Now, the kids living at the home were a neighbor, Senna's children, Cushman's niece and nephew, whom she'd been granted guardianship of, 
And a boy from Texas who she was granted guardianship of eight years earlier. His relation to Cushman, if any, has not been revealed. As you heard in the video, CYFD mentioned they'd removed the kids before. So why were they returned to the home? CYFD will not comment, citing privacy rights. The children were removed, we know, again in July and have not been returned to the home. New video tonight shows the horrific conditions at least New, at, at New Mexico, New, uh, I'm sorry, that New Mexico kids were living in before being taken out of the home by CYFD. This happened back in July. Investigators say they were chained to their beds and punished for going to the fridge. A warning, the story is disturbing. Here's News 13's Annalisa Pardo. It's a lot back here. A Curry County home full of junk and dogs. Oh, you poor thing. You have ticks all over you. Hiding a lot more than meets the eye. When CYFD and state police show up to the house in Texaco on July 22nd. Say please. Jamie Senna and Jamie Cushman were living at the house at the time with six children ages 5 to 16. Including Senna's kids, Cushman's young relatives, a neighbor and a foster child. Can I ask what we're here for? Yes, ma'am. CYFD tours the home, finding poor living conditions and evidence of abuse. First, finding a padlock on the bed. So random. They were, I guarantee they were up to something. Then this chain attached to the walls. One of the officers tries to keep the kids calm. You like to, you like looking at the fishes? Yeah, this one right here, huh? While CYFD interviews them one by one, confirming the abuse allegations. Based on the report we got, and um, the kids did confirm everything. And we saw the chain, we saw the locks, the kids told us um, how it works. The kids um, were very forthcoming this time. Well, right now, um, there's also no running water. There is. Um, it's getting turned on today. There's the the sewer line is backed up, and there's sewer. CYFD took all six kids from the home that day, and suspected one of the women was pretending to be upset. Before she went and hugged the kid, yeah. she dug her fingers really hard into her eyes. According to court documents, the kids claimed they were beaten with a paddle as punishment, starved, and chained up to keep them from taking food from the fridge. The kids have told us everything this time. The documents say a search warrant on Senna and Cushman's phones shows them talking about starving the children, threatening to hurt them, and videos of them torturing the kids, one time shoving vomit into a child's face. Police arrested both Senna and Cushman. Annalisa Pardo, KRQE, News 13. The couple each face 23 child abuse related charges. They are being held in jail until trial. I think the thing that, that really just makes it even worse is the fact that that, uh, that that police officer or whoever he was could have potentially been alerting them that, hey, CPS is about to come over there and do an investigation. The point of you even knowing that information is so that you can enforce the law, not to help people skirt the law. I think that, like I said, I think whatever time they get in jail, he should get the same time in jail if that's proven to be a true thing. But I hope they do a very thorough investigation and find out what really happened. But like I say, if they give them, I don't know how many years in prison they need, but I know they never need to be around kids again. But I'm pretty sure they didn't care about those kids. They didn't love the kids. They were in it for the benefits, whatever benefits those were. I don't really know. Because they didn't get any nice housing. It, uh, what were you going to do with the food stamps if you didn't even have any working water? And I know that um, that whenever you're on Section 8 and stuff like that and on government assistance, that they actually provide uh, assistance with things like utilities and, and paying your water bill and stuff from what I understand. Even if you didn't have all of that, I don't understand how you have three grown individuals attached to this they couldn't provide a better life for these kids than what they gave than what they gave them. 
flat out inexcusable. And anybody who wants to try to excuse this doesn't care about kids, don't love kids, and probably shouldn't be around kids at all. But like I said, I hope they give them a maximum sentence, whatever you can get for that. But I thank you guys so much for listening to the story with an open mind. Thank you.